This is part of the show where you can ask your burning questions to our leading experts. I'm very fortunate to have here today Dr. Sarinda Hundel and Mr. Dirk Kramer. Right, Sarinda, we're going to start with you. Um, now, you wrote a very interesting article in the Ultimate Beauty Guide about lifestyle and dentistry. It's, it's more than going to the dentist, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, from my perspective, I've always believed in total well-being. And when people talk about well-being, there's so many factors one has to consider. But if you look at the definition of well-being, nobody can actually identify it. But for myself, it's, uh, personally, I feel well-being is about one being comfortable, one being healthy, and one being happy. Because um, let's, let, let's be honest, you know, we, we all do get worried about going to the dentist, but, yeah. but you have a different philosophy on that. You change people's perceptions on that. No, we try to. I mean, it's, never the, it's one of those appointments in everyone's diary that nobody's ever in a hurry to get to. That's the first thing, yeah? So yeah. you've already got the tough start. But, um, but what we try to do, we, make it, uh, we try to make the journey for them and experience that it's all about the journey rather than the dentistry itself. So when they come to the clinic, they, uh, you know, they're greeted in a very comfortable environment. The team, it's all about the individual looking after them. And I think from our point of view, we get the best out of the client or the patient when they're most comfortable and they're at ease. So from my point of view is, how can you ever heal somebody in an environment that isn't suited towards it? So the first thing we actually believed in is creating the right environment where they actually feel comfortable and they can feel relaxed and they can open up and share their thoughts and their views and their concerns. Because so many times you walk into a dental clinic and uh, I suppose we'd all agree on this and, and you can smell, oh, yeah, smell the drills, yeah, you smell, yeah. the, smell the products, but in yeah. terms of, I mean you've got some very nice midi spas almost, they're, they're like midi spas aren't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. I mean, my belief was like when I was younger, growing up, you know, I'd, you know, you'd have a range of restaurants or hotels you could go to and you'd go to different places depending on your desires. And I actually thought, why can't we create a clinic of such standard as well? Because it's all about choice as well. Uh, patients have their own journey and their own choices. But what we try to do is break down those barriers so when they come to us, it's, it's a destination point for them really. And then it's a destination point where they can actually be educated and well as provide the healing parts of our treatment. So just finally, what is the total outcome for a patient? I mean, you must see some fantastic transformations and the look on their faces afterwards must be yeah. pretty amazing. I think even in today's world, I mean, you know, one of the biggest things is people are still anxious, they've got phobias and nervous and scared. And when you can transform a patient who comes to you in that state and they don't even want to be there, and then they go through that whole journey, and then it could be six months, it could be a year, and then they actually look forward to it. I think that in itself is probably one of the biggest factors that makes me feel comfortable and, enjoying, and enjoy what I do, rather than the dentistry. I mean, the dentistry is part of it anyway, but I think that's fundamental. And if you can actually instill that into somebody and they can walk away with that, then it's life-changing. Yeah. It really is life-changing. That's amazing. Well, another life-changing transformation is uh, Dr. Dirk Kramer, who's... Um, You've written an interesting article in the Ultimate Beauty Guide around facelifting, eyelid surgery, and it was called Turn Back Time. Just tell us a little bit about what was your inspiration behind that article. Well, the inspiration was to explain the readers and what my patients want in the, in the end. They, they come for facial re rejuvenation means a facelift, and we talk about an upper eyelid lift, lower eyelid lift, and the biggest fear is always to look change look different after these procedures and um, I think the approach of, of lo most surgeons is still wrong they want to create wrinkle free faces at all means instead of really uh, look behind the aging process what makes us look old why do we have jowls why don't we lose our defined jawline why do we have um, sunken in cheek um, cheeks and um, if we look and understand the physiology of aging and we can restore the useful anatomy of the face and make the people look exactly the way they look just five, ten or even fifteen years younger. Now I've got a couple of questions here for you from, uh, from social media and uh, one of them is from Anne from Hackney and she says I want a facelift that leaves some wrinkles and movement. Is that, is that possible? It's definitely possible. I think it's completely wrong approach. Um, surgeons who want to erase what I said um, each wrinkle, each movement of the face. This is not the goal. We want to look exactly the way we look, just by, like what I said eight years ago, ten years ago, or the goal should be that people say, well, she's 50, but she looked damn good. This mm. is, is it. And um, over pulling the skin is completely wrong. It's again creating this wind tunnel look effect which people are really afraid of. And uh, the way I do my facelift, I create exactly just younger and fresher patient, but it looks exactly the way 
the patient. And the, and the case studies you gave in the guide, I mean, just showcase that really, really well. I mean, there are lots of um, case studies you showed um, regarding the upper eyelid, and it's easier to show because a lot of my patients don't really show the whole face because they get away with it, having a facelift, and nobody realized they had a facelift. So posting their face, showing them before, after, it's I can understand you, that they're saying... It's because you treat such high-profile... Uh, exactly, reasons. the high-profile. And, <laughs> and the thing is, this is the, the turn back time lift um, means we turn back what time did. That's what the TBT stands for. A lot of people think TBT, turn back time, says, oh, he makes me look younger. Well, I do that. But the f uh, philosophy behind the turn back time lift means that we analyze what makes us look older and we turn back what time did to our faces. And, we do, and if we reverse what time did to our face, we exactly have our natural look, just younger. Well, thank you both of you for the information. I, I think, you know, the viewers at home, pick up a free copy of the guide and read their articles and see some of the fantastic photos and patient case studies. But you can download it on myfacemybody.com and you can ask them questions that you have on any of the treatments.